So, made it to the edge of the map, so we save, we rest, uh, if we don't get attacked, we move on. We get attacked by one of the more dangerous encounters, <laughs> and you die, and it happens. Oh jeez, yep. Yep. Uh, so one of the nice things is, here I'll just... So you'll see I've got an autosave, I've got a quick save, I've got... And wander down to this corner. So. You saw some things there, we're going to ignore them heavily. This is Mulahay. Uh, this is our first section of combat. And where I'm going to introduce our biggest cheese of the run. Uh, this is quick save, quick load. Um, and a little bit of abuse of the AI script. So, certain NPCs, uh, especially main story NPCs, have a specific uh, script that they need to follow in order for them to, you know, progress their intended uh, story beats. So Mulahe, even if you attack him first, uh, has to talk to you before he can aggro. Um, and we're going to hit him, and then we are going to reset the round so that we can hit him again. And the way we're going to do that is by quick saving and quick loading. Uh, every time you quick load, you load in at the top of a round so that you refresh your actions. Uh, and that is not an in-game uh, time save, it is an RTA time save. So, since we time everything in RTA, great benefit for us. So, uh, I am paused currently, and that is how I'd recommend you start. Uh, you use your Wand of Frost that you have now put on your menu, and you're going to attack Mulahe with it. Uh, so, when you're getting started, this next part is tricky. There are two traps here. One magic missile, one lightning bolts. We already used our potion of absorption. We haven't found a good way to avoid that lightning bolt. We kind of have a good way to avoid this lightning bolt, and it's called run fast. So you run into this corner, this corner, and then this corner. Okay? Uh, in the beginning, you can do it with the pauses like that. Uh, and we're going to head into the Iron Throne here. In the Iron Throne, uh, it's an important beat. Uh, we are investigating the Iron Throne, thoroughly and with gusto. Are you ready for it? Alright, I'm ready. No We've been talked to. I am going to leave now, because I have investigated the Iron Throne. All of it. I know everything there is to know about the Iron Throne. Because the NPC started saying his voice line. And you forget, know what? Forget believes Batman. Me. Forget Batman, forget Sherlock, world's greatest detective right here. <laughs> right there. Yep. Look at this. Just just for investigating the Iron Throne like that, we get to go see a Grand Duke. Ooh. I yeah. See? Greatest detective. Greatest detective. And we're going to uh, tell him about the plot we just learned about. We're going to get 2,000 gold for our troubles. So that's 2-2, two, two, and then 1. And then go talk to him again and say... Yes, we have found incriminating evidence. Option three, and we're going to get teleported to Candlekeep. Thorough investigation. So, I'm baffling how fast that was. <laughs> I I love that it works. I'm not entirely certain about the details of why it works, but I love that it does. I, I love the thought of, like, Batman and Sherlock are somewhere, like, reading this novel about the great detective. <laughs> he walks into a room, talks to somebody. I've got the entire conspiracy done. Here you go. <laughs> Nailed it. So, you land in Candlekeep. So we're going to do the slow version, where I run around a bit. There. Okay. So, if push comes to shove, you can just wait out that extended bit. Wait for all the spell effects to trigger, the mage to teleport down, what have you. Uh, and then you can drink your potion, uh, and then you'll be fine. But it's the slow version. Uh, and then, there are three traps on this skull, which is now all confused and messy. But you're just going to dance your way around them. Which, they are literally standing on one of the triggers. Fantastic. 
And you just dance back and forth until, uh, until death ensues. And then, uh, time ends now. And so they're basically just... And then abilities. You can honestly get away with a range of 80 to 60. Um, it's a generally... Oh my god, we had an 89 and I just clicked straight over it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that would have been amazing, but we'll live with it. Best friend. This guy is seriously our best friend. Because allow me to show you the most broken concept um, that you'll probably ever see. And again, this is why I want things nice and neat for this part. Call me a stickler, but yeah. Anyway, we are going to sell everything. And then, those weapons I just sold, we're going to steal them back. And then guess what? We're going we're to sell, sell them back. And then guess what? We're going <laughs> to steal them back. This is fantastic. And, and we are going to do this until we accumulate about 90,000, 94,000 gold. It does take a little bit, but 94,000 gold ensures that we have enough gold to get through absolutely everything we need that requires gold. Um, so the next part that the next chapter point uh, requires 15,000 gold to progress. Uh, and then there are two, that's why we grab this secret word scroll just to try and prevent that from happening. And then there's nothing else here that we need, not even this wand of fire. Although actually, now that I think about it, grabbing that wand of fire would be a good thing. I think um, I might have just come up with an optimization on, on the fly. Oh, it's only one charge. That's still helpful. Can we... Oh, hell yes. So, interesting little mechanic with wands. Um, when you have a wand that's got only a couple charges left, you can actually sell it to a merchant and then buy it or steal it back in this case, and it'll be fully charged again. As you can see, I have 50 charges on this wand again that I just took from this merchant. What I could do... does remove my stone skin, but that should protect me from the impact of most of its attacks. And there we go. Got it in one again. So yes, lots and lots of skull traps for lots and lots of damage. Yeah, you just one shot it. That's fantastic. Yes. And with all that done, we're ready to actually start the run. Uh, the timer will start as soon as you click play. Uh, but before I start the timer, I have to explain the first glitch because we're going to do it right away. So the first glitch we're going to do is called a save buffer. Uh, when you quick save in this game, there's a small period of time after the quick save where nothing can trigger. You can't trigger cutscenes. You can't trigger uh, combat, things like that. And so what we can do is use multiple quick saves to advance the game to a point when a cutscene is waiting to happen, and then load our last quick save to skip that cutscene. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to play, we're going to let the module load in, and then we're going to quick save a few times and then load our save. We're going to position our mouse up here in the top right corner because underneath that mouse is going to be the options menu, which is where we'll get to the load game menu to load our quick save. All right, everyone ready? Yep. So in five, four, three, two, one, go. So we have a uh, saved three times already and managed to open the option menu by clicking in the top right and then we're just going to use load game and load that quick save that we just loaded and here we are in the initial module we've skipped the initial cutscene which is trask running in to say hey what's up something bad is 
it's time for the next glitch. Uh, this is called a Gather Party Warp, or GP Warp for short. So to explain this, normally if you try to go through a loading zone but your party is too far away, the game tells you you must gather your party before venturing forth. And then it warps your character to a waypoint which is just outside the load zone you just tried to go through. That's what it looks like happens, but what really happens is it warps your character to the nearest waypoint that is in front of a loading zone. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to buffer into the load zone, which will delay the load zone from taking effect. But instead of loading our quick save, we're going to change our character to Karth, like so. One. That will pop up the gather party dialogue, but what, with us controlling Karth, and that will then teleport Karth to the nearest waypoint, which happens to be the one that our main character just went through. And so we've warped Karth back across the map to the place where we want to leave from. So that's a neat. Turns out it's very easy to talk to Zeradra multiple times. So you just want to mash this conversation, uh, but I'm going to mash it a few times. And then you can clone Gadden. For every time you talk to Zeradra, you can clone Gadden, and it's possible to get dozens of Gadden. <laughs> Filling deck based here. <laughs> anyway, you shouldn't do that in a speed run because you only need one Gadden to go to the swoop track. Uh, you just mash the conversation, swap back to our main character who's in front of Jar and talk again. This conversation is one one six three two six four. We just recited the Jedi code, which, as everyone knows, is six three two six four. And then we'll swap to T three and talk to Matt through. So, hooray, we, we made it. That's usually not so bad. Alright, I'm actually going to make a safety save here because I want to demonstrate a cool trick and there's a chance it will fail. Um, normally, when you click this door, it puts you into a spacesuit. And unlike the uh, scuba suit, the spacesuit wipes all your buffs and you are super, super slow. So we don't want to be slow. We want to instead go fast. So what we're going to do is try to skip putting on the spacesuit. So we're going to click on this door to open it, then immediately do one quick save and then quick load. And if everything works correctly, when we load in, the door will be open and we can run through free of our suit. Karth and Bastila have suits on, but somehow they're able to move really fast hard buffer here as well. And if you're able to stop right around here, you can attempt the skip that's named after me. This is Indie Skip. What we're going to do is try to run up to this point in the um, floor and do a quick save as soon as we reach that point. And if we're successful, we skip the trigger which spawns most of the enemies on this level. And we're able to just run through the hallways free of worry, and free of enemies to bother us. We'll find out if we get it right now. If we had not gotten it, this door would have been opened by an enemy. But since the door stayed closed and we had